This morning, we will be reading from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Please follow along as I read from the New Living Translation. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, stay here for the Lord has told me to go to Bethel. But Elisha replied, as surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went down together to Bethel. The group of prophets from Bethel came to Elisha and asked him, did you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Of course I know, Elisha answered, but be quiet about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. But Elisha replied again, as surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho came out to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied. So be quiet. Then Elisha, or Elijah, said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to the Jordan. But again Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together. Fifty men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance as Elijah and Elisha stopped beside the Jordan River. Then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it, and the river divided, and the two of them went across on dry ground. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. And Elisha replied, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah replied. If you see me when I am taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. And as they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared drawn by horses of fire. It drove between the two men, separating them. And Elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father! I see the chariots and the charioteers of Israel. And as they disappeared from sight, Elisha tore his clothes in distress. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I said earlier, this is Transfiguration Sunday, and I believe that this morning's scripture passages, both from the Old and the New Testament, show us fantastic visions of the presence and power of God. In Mark, there's the bigger than life vision of the transfigured, dazzling, and whiter than white image of Jesus, along with the words, this is my son, listen to him. Remember those words, listen to him. And then there's the Old Testament story from 2 Kings, our scripture that we're gonna to study today that tells us of the transfigured, transformed picture of Elijah as he is taken to heaven with Elisha watching, seeing the power and presence of God as a fiery chariot drawn by fiery horses takes his mentor and spiritual father to heaven. I dare say that none of us can even imagine being in the presence of such events, but both serve as encouragements about the power and presence of a mighty God as we face seasons of change and transition in our lives, in the church and in the nation. This morning, I want to spend our time together in the story of Elijah and Elisha. Maybe you've read it, I hope so. Maybe you remember it from a Sunday school class when you were a child, or perhaps you are familiar at least with the title because you remember me mentioning the movie in last week's sermon, Chariots of Fire. This scripture is also the origin of the phrase, passing the mantle. It is a story of transition. 
We have all experienced transition in our lives. Just this week, our girl Beth from Bethel transitioned from a college student studying at home to one who for the very first time is living on campus while her parents are transitioning to life without the princess in the house. In just a few short months, I will transition from a preschool slash pastor, or a preschool teacher slash pastor, to being a pastor for the very first time in almost eight years. And while I look forward to more time with my congregation and a little less pressure, I would be lying if I said it's gonna be easy. I will miss my friends and even some of the challenges that I have faced day in and day out. Our church has transitioned in who we are as well as in the way we worship. We are not the same church that we were three years ago or even 10 months ago. We have found a new niche in ECO, our new Presbyterian home. And because of COVID, we have had to learn how to worship together while being far apart. See, I told you, life is full of transitions. And the truth is, oftentimes transitions are tough. This morning we find Elijah, who was long the key prophetic voice for Israel, on his way out. Perhaps I should say, on his way up. And Elisha, his understudy, coming into his own as his successor. As we encounter the pair, they are on their way, walking along the road from Gilgal to Bethel, away from the Jordan River. If Elijah is the seasoned prophet, Elisha is the trainee and student following in his spiritual father's footsteps. While they are on their way, they meet up with a company of prophets, maybe like a group from the local seminary or the ministerium. It wasn't uncommon for a great prophet to have his own groupies when he went from town to town. As they travel, these 50 or so take Elisha and Sa aside and say, do you know that the Lord is gonna take your master from you today? Don't you just love it when people remind you of the hard times you're in or the tough season that's ahead of you? That was what this bunch was all about. Elisha tells them that he does and he also tells them to be quiet about it. I don't know if you caught this, if it caught your attention, but it did mine, and it made me wonder what Elisha meant by his remark. It had to mean something to him as well as to, as to us because he didn't just say it once, he said it twice. Let's be clear, he's not trying to keep a secret, nor is he trying to put off the inevitable as we might in a time of transition when we really don't wanna see the change that is right around the corner, whether it's as our little girl grows up or in retirement by saying, I don't wanna talk about it, okay? I think rather his words to be quiet are his well thought out response to the tough season, the transition that is ahead and it's gonna be hard. The relationship between the two men is strong and Elisha doesn't wanna be apart from his master. He would much rather follow him everywhere and does Three times on their journey, Elijah tells the younger Elisha to stay here. And three times, Elisha says, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will never leave you. Elijah is Elisha's spiritual father. And soon, and very soon, Elijah will no longer be with him on earth. He knows it, and it is a truth he cannot escape. He doesn't pretend the tough time isn't going to happen. He doesn't stick his head in the sand and ignore it. He recognizes and acknowledges the situation and chooses to stop and think and to be quiet. The word Elisha used in this scripture in the Hebrew is shasha, to hush. That's where we get the word, shasha. There are different English words used in different biblical translations, all of which make the lesson plain. Yes, Elisha said, I do know, but let's not talk about it right now. Say no more. Keep silent. Be still. Hold your peace. Elisha is saying that this is going to be hard. I get it, but
but I need you to just give me a minute to think, to think it through before I do anything. He wanted to respond, not to react. Oh, how I wish I had that wisdom. The wisdom to realize that transitions might and often do times hurt, as well as the wisdom to realize that God is still in control of it all. Whether it is a situ situation of loss and grief or simply a season of change like retirement, relocation, or change in our family structure, anything different to what it was, you and I need to remember that God sees it. He knows it and he's got it. If we wanna know how to handle life's hard times and what to do when we find ourselves in challenging situations, we need to be quiet. We need to listen, as God told Peter, James, and John. Elisha shares that with us, but he also does so in the book of Psalms and the book of Habakkuk. In those two books, there's a little word that appears 74 times, 71 times in Psalms and three times in Habakkuk. And that little word is Selah. We usually look at it in the scriptures and we don't know what to do with it. In fact, many translations have begun to leave it untranslated or just remove it altogether. The NIV puts it in a footnote at the bottom of the page. And the NLT that I use substitutes the word interlude. That's not a bad interpretation for us. Interlude is a pause, a break in the action, a time to be quiet. That's exactly what Elisha wanted, and it's what we need. As Psalms 46, 10, and 11 put it, Be still and know that I am God. I will ex be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Be still and be comforted, it says, by the presence of God. The word Selah is in the margins. In fact, it appears three times in the Psalm number 46. And it is a call to pause and calmly think about or take time to think about what you've just heard. That's what Elisha wanted. It is what we need. Time to share the deepest needs of our hearts. Time to hand over our burdens, the heavy weights of our lives to God. And then time to listen and hear God speak to us. That's what the upcoming season of Lent is all about. Pausing, listening, and giving of ourselves into the word and the will of God. As we prepare for Lent, I want to leave you with just two words. Shasha, be quiet. Let us pray. May these weeks leading up to the tragedy of Good Friday and the glory of Resurrection Sunday remind us of who you are, of how much you love us, O oh God, and who you have created us to be as your followers. May we walk through this season intentionally, removing our distractions that take our gaze away from your glory. May we quiet the noise that pulls us from adoration and puts our attention on lesser things. May we simplify where we have been stressed. May we surrender what has been burdensome. May we repent of what has been sinful, Lord Jesus. May we see your goodness and your glory in new ways throughout the season of Lent. May we come to know more fully the depths of your love. Amen.